Hello everyone, my name is Patricia and I'm the marketing manager of the Yoga Loft at Extreme Hotel here in Cabarete in the Dominican Republic and today I have Amanda and Matt with me. They are from Beneath the Surface Foundation and yeah, we've been chatting back and forth in the last year um, about hosting a retreat. They were so dedicated to come and yeah, as you all know, the pandemic hit, but we still use this time to interview people and stay in, in contact and in community through these little interviews. So yeah, let's jump uh, straight into it. So maybe Amanda and Matt, you want to introduce the foundation a little bit. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> sure. So at Beneath the Surface Foundation, we started back in December of 2018. And it all kind of came together between Matt's background and my background. Uh, Matt was in the military for 12 years, deployed over 11 times. And from that, he came back with a little bit of post-traumatic stress, as one could imagine. And through that, he worked um, in the ocean and did a lot of work through water therapy, ocean therapy, wind sports, and, and yoga. And he started to transform his mindset and his mental health and everything coming out of that. And my background was um, in yoga initially, and then I became a massage therapist. I started doing a lot of body work and noticed the connection between how the body responds to trauma and how touch and healing touch can actually help somebody kind of get more in tune with themselves. And so from that, Matt and I connected and we created Beneath the Surface Foundation, which now is helping combat veterans to work through their post-traumatic stress to learn different avenues that are holistic healing. Um, we include ocean therapy is what we call it. And that's extreme water sports, including kiting, the new wing foiling, surfing. And then we pair that with yoga and mindful movement in addition to meditation. And that's kind of our, our little niche. And we'll dive deeper into the curriculum later in this conversation. But our whole goal is to help combat veterans find new outlets that can help them match the type of adrenaline that they experienced in combat, but have a healthy outlet to really heal when they're in civilian life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was great. You hit it all. Um, yeah, for me, the, the attraction first was to use the ocean. When I left uh, active duty, um, I moved to this like secluded beach town uh, on Oahu and just spent every day in the ocean, surrounded by that energy, mm -hmm. kiteboarding, surfing, paddling, just something with intent always in the water. So for me, it was the ocean first, and then the the yoga piece sort of wrapped around. And for Amanda, it was yoga first, and then mm -hmm. the ocean. Um, so we, we both have unique perspectives um, on how to view what it is that we want to share and offer to this community. And then so with those different vantage points, we like, we, we feel like we see the problem or, you know, we see the, uh, the issue as a, as a, as a whole, and we have something unique that we're very honored to, to share with these people. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I'm a water enthusiast and a yogi myself. So yeah. Uh, it, so well together it's like they they you know you see it at a professional level all the pro surfers and pro water athletes they all use yoga for that that mind body connection like the applicability of it is is so, so vast and just water and yoga they just they, they go really well together they do they do yeah um, yeah, speaking about what Amanda already briefly mentioned, the curriculum, I mean, we already said that you are going to host a retreat with us, and I know that you already had previously uh, immersions in different places. Um, what other parts are there in, in your curriculum? Our curriculum was designed not to just be a retreat experience. It's designed to support veterans in being able to carry on with the practices beyond the retreat. So you're not just coming for a seven day immersion where you learn something new and then you go home and then that's it. Our goal is to really provide something for veterans to be able to incorporate it into their daily lives. So the uh, curriculum has three different phases. And before you attend an immersion, you are receiving a six week preparatory phrase of 
yoga classes online. We're checking in with you. We're having you do some mindfulness around the consumption that you're taking in with media, with foods, with alcohol, with all the things, just to take an overview of where you are at and learn once you go on the retreat, how you can better go about your day when you get home. So that's the preparatory phrase. And then the immersion is our immersion phase and that's seven days and we'll spend all that time I'm including the yoga and the mindfulness and ocean activities. And I'll let Matt kind of dive into what uh, a seven day immersion looks like. And then beyond the immersion is what we call the aftercare phase. And that is similar to the preparatory phase where you're given different kinds of videos to follow along with and other um, journaling and mindfulness. And then we also have a psychologist on our staff who mm -hmm. is helping check in with the patterns to make sure that they're transitioning into this newer lifestyle with um, a healthy mindset and not feeling overwhelmed by it. Yeah. Do you have kind of insights um, of what, what are the biggest challenges for them? Or what, what are the biggest transitions they, they usually the have in, to, in that kind of an immersion? So thankfully, the, the entire paradigm surrounding mental health, especially in the, the combat veteran spaces, has shifted very dramatically, probably in the last, maybe in the last five years, there's just been this like massive open acceptance of like, there's enough people that have gone before, before them so that maybe they're not as skeptical. Um, they're a little more open minded to, to trying things. That for us is, is seems to be the biggest challenge is you're met with, with, with um, a lot of them have preconceived notions that they're not, you know, oh, I, I lack flexibility. I, I can't do yoga. I have all these limitations. So they walk into the environment, into the experience, already doubting the, the potential outcome or the potential growth that would come from, from learning these practices in this experience. So for us, it's, it's demystifying it for one. It's, mm -hmm. it's taking away a lot of this um, mystique and, and this uh, hyperbole that can sometimes surround what a yoga practice can do. And it's more about just stripping it down and delivering it in a very raw format, in a very accept accessible format, but one that is very impactful. And we want we don't want to just bring these, these you know, people into this experience and, and, and showcase all of the the, the beautiful postures and movements and body control. It's more about, you know, what is it at its, at its bare minimum? And what is it that, what is a foundation that we can teach them that they can then build upon and grow? Once we have that, once we have them in front of us and we have a class full of people, all limitations are out the door. And at that point, people are very open to, they, they trust and, you know, they, mm. they let us guide them through this experience. So the biggest obstacles that we found are, are before they they come to our experience and then once they're there then it's you know it's all it's all work and it's all good <laughs> and then they leave and then they have this this practice that they can then expand upon you know everyone hears like the benefits of, of yoga of meditation of mindfulness and if you youtube it you're going to be just inundated with thousands and thousands of interpretations that may or may not resonate with you and if you unfortunately click on the wrong the wrong YouTube channel and you're watching a yoga video that's maybe doesn't have your history and your, you know, your uh, unique filter that maybe you'll apply to it, they're going to turn it away and they're going to leave. So mm -hmm. at that point, then all the benefits are, are, you know, they're, they're lost. So for us, it's getting through, through the, the media that's already out there through the excess um, and just delivering our unique, you know, interpretation uh, of the practices. And yeah. for, for us, it, 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 it's, it's not for everyone, but the way that we teach and who we teach for, it seems to do the job quite well. Yeah, I mean, I checked in a few of your uh, videos you have on the Vimeo account and I was just like, yeah, you are definitely speaking their language, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, military, doesn't make sense. It's just like, yeah, this is how it is, right? And uh, you just use words that are more accessible. And um, yeah, and, and 
uh, you know the people very well, I guess. That's also what it comes down to. Yeah, like Matt said, you know, in the last five years, the, the paradigm has shifted within that community. And even, even if it's just still new, it's still something. And then pair that with the fact that he has the background from being on deployments, from being in that community for so many years, to be able to tap into that, it's, it, it's challenging, it has its challenges, but he can speak that language and he can teach other people to speak that language. And so our reach is far more powerful than it just being like a YouTube video online, but that's yeah. what we're working against. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to, I don't know, how, how long do you practice yoga, Matt? Do you want to tell us a little bit more? You already briefly mentioned it, that first came the water sports and then yoga wrapped around it. But can you remember your first yoga class? Why did you try that? <laughs> or how did that happen? I think I had been, so when I was, when I was really young, I grew up overseas and I traveled a lot and I was, I was exposed to a lot of different, um, different cultures and I was intrigued at a young age by the concept of, of like Eastern philosophy, like Taoism and Buddhism. And I remember I got a book on yoga when I was like 17. Um, and I, I remember watching in the book, there was a guy who was, you know, flossing through his nair mm -hmm. with his mouth. I was like, Man, that's some, uh, that's some excessive stuff there. You know, maybe I'm not at that level of like spiritual purification. And I put the book down and didn't really think much of yoga for, for years. Um, and then I, you know, throughout my military career and I somehow it would pop up and it always piqued my interest. And I just dreamt it or something inspired me to like, you know, to give it a go. I, I, I kept like being these little reminders would pop up of like, hey, give this a go, you know, give it a, you know, and at that the time I thought it was just stretching as most, most of us did in the early days of, you know, before yoga was, you know, like, all over Instagram and, and YouTube. It was like, I, I just thought that yoga was stretching. It was like, oh yeah, I need, I need some of that stretching. And, <laughs> um, unfortunately, my first, my first experiences with yoga weren't quite uh, that memorable. It was maybe going into a class, like a, an Ashtanga, or not an Ashtanga, a, uh, like a Bikram class, which is like very regimented and structured. And me being, you know, an A-type special operator at the time was like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to see through this. And it was, one of the more most challenging things I had ever done, like physically. Okay. And then something else I struggled with was the like the mindset, um, especially in the Bikram world. It was like a very elitist type of uh, like like click environment, and that didn't that didn't sit well with me. I wanted something that was a little more open, a little more encompassing, a little more welcoming. Um, and I ultimately found my way to a Rodney Yee DVD. Um, and I really enjoyed the, the difficulty of it. You know, I was, I was at the time, I was really big and muscular and mean looking and used to spend a lot of time like lifting weights and doing all these things, you know, pushing weight away from me and using all these external distractions, loud, heavy metal music and like pre-workout stuff and like getting as big and strong as I could. We have to send you a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like a hundred kilos at one point. And then, and then I was, I was very challenged by the idea of using my own body. Like why would holding my arms out be so challenging? And like, how could I generate this much difficulty in my body? And the, the one thing that kept me going back to the practice was it, it, it always elicited this voice inside my head, this like, this like self doubt, this, uh, this challenging, I don't belong here. This is, I don't belong in this go back to lifting weights. And for some reason, my tenacity and perseverance, like was attracted to that voice only to shut it up for long enough to prove it wrong. And you go, go back to your mat more and more and all, you know, over time it, it softens even more and then it becomes this voice of confidence and it becomes a voice of like unification as you start to understand your body and you start to develop awareness and consciousness in parts of your body that you had no idea existed. Mm. Um, it, it became more, it became more of an enjoyable, I mean, I use enjoyable quite relative, like it was exhausting, but it was so unique and so, 
different from what I was used to. And I, I started to crave that sensation. I, I crave the difficulty. I crave the challenge. Um, and I, I crave that awareness and that, that sensation when you're finished. And ultimately what it came down to, I think, was the, the intention. I, everything I was doing prior to that, in as far as like my, my physical practices, lacked intention. So mm -hmm. once I started to add intention, I was able to then take that practice off a of mat and apply that intention towards everything else in my life. The mat was just, you know, my little space to, to learn these lessons, but the application of it then became um, how I would interact with others, how I would navigate, you know, periods of, of post-traumatic stress and the difficulties surrounding that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's been 15 years at this point, uh, I've been practicing, um, yeah, no sign of slowing down. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Also that aspect of, um, yeah, for me, I mean, I also spent quite some time in the gym and it's kind of the, the similarities is like, you know, it never gets easy. It's the same with yoga. It's never, or, or with surfing or whatever, it's never going to be easy, but yoga teaches you to nevertheless do it and stick with it and um, yeah, finding grace in, uh, in your suffering, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Maybe uh, let's dive into the topic of um, yeah PTSD a little bit more. A, a question from a fellow yoga teacher. Um, trauma informed is a big keyword anyway in the yoga scene right now. But um, yeah, how do you adapt your yoga teaching to suit veterans? Um, what triggers do you, do you have to navigate? Are there special triggers you are aware, or you need to be aware of, or is it such a, is it a little bit of everything and you balance it with your language already? I think a lot of it has to do with the language that we use. Um, both Matt and I have taken a couple of trauma informed classes so that we have more understanding of it. And I think Matt, having lived with his own trauma and overcoming it, we've explored that quite a bit in not only our relationship, but our ability to communicate it through teachings that we share with uh, veterans. And in addition to that, our program is built so that we can reach different levels within the, the yoga portion of our curriculum. So for example, our ocean therapy is what we call upregulation. So that's the adrenaline, that's getting all of that high energy out that a lot of veterans are seeking. For example, buying a Ducati after they get out of the military because they want to go fast and they want to feel that extremism or what else? Something else extreme. There's a lot of reckless behaviors when, when you're drinking a lot, when you're in combat, that sensation of that hyper arousal that is very unique to dangerous settings and scenarios like that. When you repeat them time and time again, as combat veterans have, there's like this, like you, you crave an intensity, even though it terrifies you and has caused you trauma, there's still this, like this part of you that craves that intensity. So like Amanda saying, like for us, the water sports is that intensity. However, it's sustainable. It's not, it's not reckless, dangerous behaviors, drinking and driving, drugs, sex, gambling. They're more sustainable and they're a lot more better. They're a lot more holistic and they can be equally as fun. If you've ever strapped a kite to you on a windy day and an overhead swell, I mean, that could be the most exhilarating thing you've ever done in your life. So and, yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's built around, you know, with techniques, you learn from different um, instructors and you have like a base understanding and you have to know all the safety regulations, but they're in place for that. They're not, you know, you're taking calculated risks when you go mm -hmm. out there. So that's our up regulation. That's where we reach that adrenaline and we kind of exhaust that need for the adrenaline yeah. and then tap into the down regulation or the yoga and the mindfulness and the meditation. And so all of these other things that you can attach to, they're gone. They're, you know, that energy is gone. Your brain's already at a point of wanting to come back down and you want to, like you crave now that little lull. And so meditation comes a little bit easier and 
movement in your body comes easier and you might notice something in your body that is more present maybe your trauma that you stored in your shoulder because of the where the barrel of the gun would sit but you don't attach to it as much because the energy that causes you to attach to things is already exhausted mm -hmm. yeah. so that's, kind of, that's one of our biggest areas of working on um with veterans and working you know to keep trauma not as like extreme of a um it's like our insurance in a way you know yeah. that we're that we're incorporating that adrenaline based aspect too and not to not to oversimplify and just speak in such broad terms but you know because not every veteran follows the same path but what we see a lot especially with the up regulation is we see a lot of those dangerous behaviors we see a lot of the you know the driving fast and taking up you know really like non-sustainable behaviors you know shooting ranges and fighting and like all these different things and then we see with the down regulation which ultimately they crave a lot of them turn to alcohol mm -hmm. or prescription medications which are very prevalent in the veteran community because our veterans affairs is you know very much like pharmaceutically based uh, they're getting better um, but there's very much like a, i'm gonna go do these aggressive behaviors to fill that that adrenaline seeking state and then i'm going to calm it all down with drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. and again not everybody follows this path but to some extent you know there you know even if you just every day have a drink to wind down at the end of the day you're still relying on some external uh you know depressant to to get you to a certain state where for us we like to make it more sustainable and more holistic so we have the up regulation through the extreme sports and the down regulation through meditation yin yoga breath work things that ne don't necessarily impact the entire nervous system such as a benzodiazepine would or alcohol would but something that can replicate those and it, it, they can then carry that practice with them for the rest of their life yeah so that's the that's the i think that the um you know the model really is it's already what they're doing so yeah. not everyone but it's already what they're doing we're just replacing each of the actions with healthy outlets rather yeah. than the, the ones that are so extreme that can cause, you know, a lot of dangerous behaviors. And, and I think a, a lot of what you're doing is also already um, educating people around, hey, this is why you're craving your Ducati or whatever, and this is why you need then the alcohol or whatever at night. So already bringing awareness to this is huge, in, in my opinion. And uh, I can imagine that, the, especially the water sports, but then in the end as well, the yoga for having that practice that you can take home is so empowering. I can imagine that uh, veterans must feel very lonely to come back to their families having no idea what they went through. Um, so yeah, to me, it seems like a very healthy um, practices they can take with them and feeling empowered again and yeah, finding their voice again. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you want to go? I think also the, the important part for us to include the aftercare phase is that, yes, maybe they came home to this family that can't relate to them and then they go on an immersion and they experience this other really magical, if you go on a retreat, you like, that's all you're focusing on. So of course you're going to come back and be like, oh my gosh, let me tell you about all these things. But what if that the people that you're coming back to knew you as someone else before you went on this retreat and had this experience and how do you reconnect with them and explain it to them and still feel not like don't find any like shame in the fact that like maybe you are a little more vulnerable or you mm -hmm. are a little bit more uh, wanting to try something <laughs> new that maybe somebody doesn't see as healthy or doesn't is ashamed of themselves for not trying it or whatever, whatever the case may be. So that's why it's so important for us to have a psychologist and different check-in phases with them once they do return home, because we want to, we want to support them doing this in their daily lives beyond the retreat. And we also don't want them to feel like they can't do it. And yeah, so it's, it's really important that we're there for them too, beyond just the, 
a really magical experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, one point you mentioned is the one trigger point might be the shoulder where they were holding their barrel. And one part I saw in one of the video clips was uh, you're wearing a, a, a vest that protects you and that heart openers are uh, a little bit difficult in the beginning. Um, yeah, are there other? Definitely, you know, millions of years of evolution have taught us to protect this, this region on ourselves, And especially when you go into combat, you wear this you know, 35 pound body armor and you're constantly like, it's just like this, this shell that compresses you and pulls you down. And then, you know, you carry a rucksack and your shoulders become rounded. And then ex asking somebody to expose this, this portion of their body, especially, you know, a, a special operations combat veteran, alpha type male, is very challenging for them. And they don't necessarily always understand why it's just this inherent nature to protect. Um, so we, we, you know, we take it slowly and we just like gradually, gradually peel away the layers of the imaginative armor that's been creative. So they've hung up the official body armor, but they still carry it around. So we just gently chip away at it and, you know, in a safe environment and allow them to open it a little bit more. And then maybe they breathe a little bit deeper and they stand a little taller and they can move through these, through these sequences and these movements with, Maybe there's a, a, a slight sensation of elevated anxiety, but then we teach them to recognize it and then we teach them to breathe through it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, whoa, wait a minute. If I did that, if I did that in this controlled environment, can I do it, you know, when I'm in a scenario that maybe I don't want to be in? Yeah. And it's just, it's just little lessons yeah. and little, little guidance that we can continuously inject into their, into their experience that will then help them to carry it beyond their immersions. Yeah, so much stuff going on with that yoga practice of ours. It's just <laughs> so powerful. I'm still amazed. I mean, even for myself, right? I mean, I was never in really dangerous situations, but yeah, it's so empowering. And uh, something, one, another thought that came up is uh, non-attachment, aparigraha. That's also something we learn a lot. So I guess um, I, I can imagine that, especially for veterans, this is also something like, okay, let's step out of that, whatever situation I'm in right now, and let's not be attached to it. Also, very good for water sports. <laughs> and, that, and, that's what, and that's actually what I was going to say. That's what we teach that the most is, you know, the non-attachment, especially, you know, you practice the work, not the outcome. And then especially with, with a lot of these, these people who come through our, um, our immersions experience is they're very used to controlling a situation. They're very, especially in combat, they're very used to being the dominant force in a room. They're very used to being, um, you know, maybe the biggest, the strongest, the fastest. And that's, that's not a sustainable way to, to go through life. And it's very challenging, very exhausting. And or in <laughs> and, in the, and in the ocean is where we really like grit, apply that lesson the most. If you attach a kite to yourself and it's a windy day and you don't learn to harmonize and go with the flow and find your place between elements, you're going to be humbled really, really quick. Yeah. So, thankfully, kiteboarding and, you know, it teaches that lesson for us pretty, pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Day one, you give them a trainer kite and it's like, whoa, oh my God. Like I couldn't muscle my way through that. Like, well, yeah. no, you find the flow and and find the ability to to soften what needs to soften and it's for us it's so it's so helpful because the ocean and you know standing in waist deep water and flying a kite and body dragging or sitting and waiting for a wave it's it, it teaches all of our lessons for us and then we just relate it back to them later in the day and they're like oh yeah you're right oh man right <laughs> yeah. like if we move into a yin practice, you know, and they're laying there with a bolster along their spine and their chest open, and that that's the point where we maybe something comes up and we yeah. point out, like, do you remember when you were out in the water today and the you tried to control the kite and it tossed you, you know, 20 feet forward and connect that to this moment. And so, yeah, we, we relate it throughout the whole immersion but it does the teaching for us which is really helpful <laughs> yeah. yeah but come on you hold the space for that right and hold the community together so absolutely but yeah trying to paddle outside you know and like just getting hammered by every wave and then like wait a minute oh there's a channel right there you know go down to el encuentro and try and paddle straight out just go but it's like teaching those those little things and bring that awareness and that mindfulness and presence that it's, 
it's, I mean, for us, it makes complete sense. We've been doing this for years, but when you, when you, when you offer that insight to somebody who's having a challenging time, it can, it can just open their eyes to the possibilities. And yeah. it's, it's so, and for yeah. us doing it, it's so fulfilling and so rewarding for us to share this and, um, and, and to hold that space and to create these environments for these people. Yeah. You know, we're, we're teaching people like, it's okay to like laugh at yourself and be like, it's okay that you looked th like goofy right now. Like it's really, it's okay because when you're beyond that and you know how to kite or you know how to get outside, mm -hmm. like you're going to be loving the experience. Just those little bits of things that we can get them to let go and to shed that armor that they're holding on to, to show that there is, there is beauty in living being humbled by a wave <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 now that you mention all these things i mean i've been there so much with the paddling out there or uh, yeah just a, a gust coming and yeah you get smacked in the face i've been i i started windsurfing when i was seven and i've been in the ocean ever since then and i still every session i go out i learn something new like it, it you never map there's always something new to learn there's always a new way to be humble there's always a new experience we're like i wasn't expecting that like <laughs> I was out wing foiling the other day and it was beautiful. And then the wind died and I'm like, now I got to swim home and like, just, you know, it, it was just, there's so like patience, right? Do I allow that to define my entire session or do I, you know, am I upset because I had to swim, you know, 30 minutes home or am I so elated because I got to dance with the wind and the water for two hours. And it's just, it's, it was always lessons to be had. And it's just, you know, we just create an environment where for those lessons to be, to be offered and shared with everyone. And he came back with a big smile on his face. <laughs> I was waiting for him. He's just paddling, big smile on his face. <laughs> I think anytime you go in the water, like it's like a you come out new. If your face is in the water, there's just this sense of freshness and invigoration. Invigoration? No, no. Making words. You're up reborn. Now. Yeah, you're <laughs> amazing we actually learned just a little side we learned uh we spent a lot of time snowboarding this winter because normally we're traveling in to warm places and kiting and surfing and doing all this but with covid we we were home a lot more so we spent a lot more time in the snow and we had a blast we had so much fun and on powder days it felt like you're foiling or surfing the earth so it was it was cool to experience a different element Mm -hmm. And the one thing that we kept coming back to that was missing for us was that like that sense that you get when you when your full body and face and everything is in water and you come out of that there that little aspect carries so much energy mm -hmm. to feel a different sense of um, re being reborn when you yeah, it's when so you're nurturing. Done with the sport, it it's is. so nurturing. Like when you're in the water, just the compression. Like one of my favorite things to do, especially if I'm going for like a, a, a dawn patrol surf session, is just paddle outside and then just like take a moment, just go underwater and just like feel that like weightlessness mm -hmm. and that compression. And then it's like, ah, uh, it's, it's like, okay, now my day can begin. And then I'll catch yeah. wave. Yeah. Just, oh, it was already complete. For me, it was yeah. already complete. It was That's already all complete. Day. All yeah. yeah so that's it's so special and it's so oh it just you can never it never gets old it never will yeah yeah so let me check my my list of questions what didn't we do address yet um yeah i think we all that's left is how do veterans find you or how do you find them <laughs> was well, i just yeah, kicked out i agree or, we freeze up. We, I, we're can back. You hear me? I can hear you again. No, 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 no. Together. I hear you. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah. So uh, the easiest way to find us is on Instagram, where we try to be really active on Instagram. So it's just beneath the surface foundation. Um, second to that, it's beneath the surface foundation.org is our website. And that's where people finding us. 
uh, for us to find people, we have a lot of networks, um, a lot of you know, different communities. And we've sort of over the past few years become well known in the veteran circles, um, especially with, with regards to yoga. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, from there, it's just a sign up and we, we do our best to accommodate everyone. Yeah. We have local events. Uh, here in Hood River, Oregon, the Gorge for, for any wind sport enthusiasts. Um, so they can sign up if they're local. Um, and then the intent is to be in Cabarete at least once a year, if not four times a year, which is what we had, <laughs> had planned um, yeah. at the Extreme Hotel. And it has, I mean, you have the setup there is, is absolutely amazing. Between Ellen Quentro in the morning for just world class surf to like right over your right shoulder being one of my favorite yeah. spots to kite on earth. Yep, right there. So it, <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove that we are really, really beachfront and that you're really uh -huh. right on kite beach and also to give you the advantage of the beautiful view I am enjoying all the time. Uh -huh. yeah. And you wake up and practice yoga right there and you get to smell it and see it and feel it. And then you go down to Ellen Quentro and paddle and surf and then fresh food, oh, the food from the farm. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, I mean, what you guys have done there at the Extreme Hotel is like really captured everything that we want to share with the world and just have it in one amazing spot that just happens to have some of the most amazing conditions on earth. Thanks so much. For and a wave that, yeah. spot. Actually, one of my one of my like top ten wave sessions with a kite was actually at Ellen Quench or uh, excuse me at at Kite Beach, Beach. in Cabarete. Yeah, the <laughs> reef is pretty solid out there. I mean, if you swell, it was just peeling. Oh my god, it was amazing. It is. It really is. If, I think you also get a, a nice. Uh, yeah, in October anyway, we have a nice swell. It's really yeah. There, the conditions are even better yeah but um yeah it for me personally i mean i got kind of stuck here um just to share a little bit my my history i was supposed to spend here only a sabbatical i always loved extreme i've never stayed anywhere else in in cabaret because i i've i've liked that vibe here so much um it's just i always felt at home here people were always very very nice and it's uh, just from my personal experience um yeah the come as you are approach right i mean i was just such a such a nerdy engineer when i came here and this spot opened the world for me so yeah i can can imagine what you what you find about it here because everyone's welcome and uh, it's just like uh, they take the pressure away here I do. It, yeah, it's like you can breathe a little bit deeper when you're there. Yeah. Imagine living in some type of darkness for years to walk into such an open and welcoming and inviting place like that. It's yeah, we're so excited to be back and to bring to yeah. bring people there. Oh my god, I can't wait. Yeah. We've <laughs> <laughs> been talking about it a lot lately. Yeah. I can't imagine. It must have been hard for you, pandemic lockdowns and so on, and also the uncertainty. And I mean, we speak, uh, briefly spoke about it before we started recording. Um, yeah, to pull the trigger to come or not come, because originally you already wanted to be here last year with your immersions. Um, yeah. Well, so it's, it's going to make this October that much sweeter yeah. and that yeah, much better. Totally. And the world needs it. The world definitely needs it. Everyone needs it, not just combat veterans, not just you know people suffering from trauma. Everyone needs that type of outlet in their life. They need that type of balance of, of effort and ease. And it's, I mean, if we could share this with the world, with everyone, everyone would benefit from it. Our goal is to eventually <clears throat> expand from the combat veteran community and to open it to more people because especially with the pandemic, but just in life in general, we all experience trauma some more extreme than others, some less understandable than others, but we all experience it and everyone can benefit. So we do have that in our, in our future. Definitely. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, is there anything you guys would like to add? I give um, you the last word. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to speak with us. I mean, it was really lovely to chat with you and, and even nicer to see you over your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime that we get to talk about our mission and share it with people who also understand water and wind and the elements, it's, it's so motivating for us and it, it reignites 
that reason why we initially started the foundation and it yeah it wa- it makes us want to do more yeah you should you should <laughs> thank you so much thank you yeah